negotiations and advocacy, which would be taken in two parts. Today, we are going to look at the strategic approach where we will learn to uh, identify our audience. We'll also uh, talk about rele uh, relevant messaging and also what are the available platforms for com communication and how can we use these platforms effectively and also how we can measure this uh, communication. So uh, let's start with Sylvia. Sylvia is in the field of communications planning for over 30 years now uh, in India and in Australia. And uh, she's constantly amazed uh, at my, how much more there is to learn. Um, she has a passion for cooking and traveling. However, uh, as you know, the pandemic has taken over. We can't really travel as much, but uh, we've, uh, we've been working with Sylvia for a while now and Antara. And thank you, Sylvia, for taking this. She's also a participant of Aro Arohan. So it's the first time a participant is taking a session. And uh, uh, it did, uh, I wouldn't say it takes that much convincing to have uh, Sylvia on board uh, as a participant at Arohan, but we're so glad you're part of the Arohan family, Sylvia. Thank you so much for taking this session for us. And also welcoming Antra, who is a communication spe specialist as practice. Um, she spares her time, she loves backpacking, she illustrates and doodles a lot, and also leaves uh, feminist comments on Facebook posts. And she has a lovely cat too. So thank you, Antra, for joining us. Uh, so yes, they are a team and it's lovely to have a team uh, work with us. So thank you so much. And I hope uh, we make full good use of the session. So over to both of you. Thank you. Thank you, Shreya. Thank you, Shreya. I'm just going to share my screen or, um, yeah, should I do that first, Sylvia, or do you want For to? Sure. I just wanted to say we're not professional um, uh, trainers, so please bear with us as we uh, try and partake, uh, share some knowledge with you today. Not by a long shot. Just one second. Um... So just as we do that, I think, um, as uh, Shreya said, uh, we've when we understood what the what needed to be communicated to this group in the, basically the importance of communication, we realized that there were, um, and we were both going to do this these sessions separately. Antra was going to do one and I was going to do one, but we realized that there was going to be a lot of overlap in if we did it that way. So we, we're, we're uh, combined the sessions to try and um, make sure that we don't overlap with each other. And in fact, the way it's worked out is that um, what we'd like to do today is, is probably a little bit of theory, so bear with us, but we do have some interactions, interactive parts to it as well. So I hope just like the chat box has been from the start of this session, we're going to all be participating and helping us out in making this a good session for you. Sorry, sorry, I dropped off for a second. Uh, Shriya, it's saying the host has disabled screen, uh, screen share. Can you please uh, grant me permission? Try now. Yeah. Um, are you able to see the right screen, Sylvia? Yes. And you want to put it on? Um, yeah. At the same? yeah. Sorry, go ahead. So, yes, as I said, we're going to, <laughs> we're going to cover a little bit of theory uh, today, um, but we're really also going to uh, ask you to participate as best as we can uh, in basically covering of the importance of communication and advocacy. So moving to our next slide, uh, one of the key things about communication is making sure that we all uh, know a little bit about each other. So we're going to start with a little ice icebreaker exercise and we're going to ask you all please to share with us, what did you have for lunch today? I didn't got have a group a from across the, uh, across the country, so surely it won't all be sambar. I had no <laughs> Elsa has dosa. Great. I had rasam. <laughs> We've got two South Indians so far. Yeah. Uh, even I had dosa and sambar and chutney. Mm -hmm. I had chapati. Come on, I, where are all you North Indians? Dosa Fish. and sambar. Dosa and sambar. 
Rohu fish and rice. Very nice. Chapati. I uh, black chana. I woke up late today, so I had a breakfast for lunch, basically. <laughs> great, great. So we all had a um, nice mix. So um, we're going to get right into it. What we wanted to, what we want to cover today is how, what, what are some of the, you know, how do you go about the. Uh, delivering really good communication, effective communication, and how, what are some of the must, must do's when you get to uh, communication? So um, I think one of the reasons why a lot of the time communications campaigns fail is because they don't begin with a clearly stated uh, definition or goal as to what they want to do. What is the, what is the desired result? Where do you want to end up? Um, what, and, and so if you do run a, uh, a successful campaign, it, uh, it means that you have really thought about what are the outcomes you want to drive. So let, if, if, if you, whenever you're planning for communication, I think the first place to start is what are your clear measurable goals? If you take the palliative care um, example, I mean, maybe your goal might be something like, uh, I want to make sure everyone has access to so that's a goal. Then it will tell you what the outcome, and depending on that goal, you can drive some of the outcomes you want to see. So first things first, clear measurable goals. The second thing is knowing your audience and understanding what really motivates them. Um, or else you're going to be talking to the air and not necessarily making sure that your audience is accepting it. And we'll go into a little bit more detail uh, here. I recall, I think it was the last session, uh, it might have been Purnima who said, when we, when we talk to people about um, palliative care, they listen, but they're not engaged or words to that effect. That's what we mean. You, if you know more about them and you understand what moves them, perhaps we can make that, make that leap. So that's one thing that we'll talk about. Having a compelling message. Um, it's really important for us to have a compelling message that's going to connect with this audience once you kind of understood who they are a little bit. And essentially that comprises of uh, your message must be what are you doing? Why are you doing it? How are you doing it? And, and in very importantly, what action or, or what action is needed and why is it needed now? Yeah. So those are some of the kinds of that's that in order to drive your compelling mes uh, messages. You need to understand that your communication is never going to go out within a, a small little um, sphere, even if it's, you know, you're talking to a small audience. There is always a broader stakeholder universe that happens, especially in these days today of um, social media and everyone being having access to being a journalist or a, or a media person themselves, because we all can send messages and share messages and things like that. So it's really important to understand your broader stakeholder universe. And we'll talk about that too in a little bit of detail in, in, in shortly. If you have a syst systematic planned way that is, that is being reviewed and revised, you have a much greater chance of succeeding in what you want to drive at the end. And Having a plan means you will be able to match your strategy and ta tactics then to attract, to target the audiences that, you, that you're trying to speak to. Critically, budget for success. Whatever that means for you in the context of it, even if you're starting small, uh, make sure that, imagine that you're going to, success, to, to succeed and therefore you will need to take um, you will need to take certain steps in order to fulfill that success. I mean, the budget could be monetary, it could be in time investment, it could be whatever um, is the requirement. Um, and finally, you have to be brave. Um, if you're going to uh, communicate your cause, you just, because there, it's not going to be easy and there's going to be lots of, um, you know, stumbling blocks along the way, bravery is going to help. Now, this is all really theory, but what I thought we would do, if I could have the next slide, please, Angela. Let's look at, some, at a cause that is being communicated right now in, the, in our midst. And let's see if these guys have actually followed the eight must-dos in communicating their cause. 
I speak, of course, about the farmer protest. Um, we're all seeing it covering the news, right, all the time. Um, what do you think? Do you think they had clear, measurable goal set out? You can send in your chat box or you can... Ah, <sighs> that... What's the one thing that they've stood for all along? They want those farm laws uh, which are against them to be uh, scrapped, repeat. to be taken away, repeat, repeat, yeah. Very clear goal, right from the start, they've been saying that, that, that. Or there's been lots of uh, in-between conversation, but the thing that you we keep hearing, it's not that I, we, we know much about what's going on inside, but what are we coming away from? We want the goal, we want the farm laws repealed. That's what they know. So they've set that as a goal. Yeah? Then, um, what what's the um, what in in this context? Do they have uh, do do they know who they are dealing with and reaching out to and uh, communicating with? Do you think? Yes, surely they are reaching out to everybody here in Punjab and uh, moreover all over India. All are participating with them in different ways. Somehow they've managed to capture everyone's attention, right? I mean, of course, they've had lots of press coverage, but no matter what, you either have a pro or a con, but nobody's sitting on the fence. Everybody's kind of going along with them. They've understood that there will be people who are sympathetic to farmers. There will be people who say, uh, no, these are just trying to, uh, you know, get the best out of it. So they they know who they're talking to and, yeah. and they know how they're going to uh, use different audiences well. Yesterday, not, I believe, uh, sorry, yesterday, yes, yesterday, the women have uh, taken the leadership and they have uh, run this entire protest uh, right from the time of pre preaching till the time of participants. Everybody were women yesterday. Yes, sir. Yes. They have, um, they have a compelling, they have they thought about compelling messages in this whole thing? Have you, have you had any message come through for, strong messaging come through for you? Repeat the laws, that's it. Yeah. Unjust, the fact that it's, un, I mean, they, that's what they're saying, right? It's unjust for them. They've, 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 said, they've said why they're doing what they're doing. They've said what they're doing. We're, we're protesting for, the, for all of us to make sure that there's food on your table. They've, they've understood how they could get they can connect with the target audience. Farmers, they've gone into that whole thing about making farmers a indispensable part of uh, society and how their cause is your cause as well. Yeah. So in that way, they've really understood, I feel that they've really understood their broader st stakeholder universe because we've all become stakeholders in this uh, whole communication. Um, one of the, we've said, have they systematic planning? Have they had systematic planning? I mean, they've got, they've, they've got a whole city out there for two months. Yes. With tents and yes, they have, they have systematic planning. They have yeah. arranged everything from basic things to more complicated things. And uh, they have uh, not involved any political, par political parties along with them during this moment. Mm. Yeah. And they've come prepared for the long haul. So they don't have to rush and expect the government to work within so many days or we go back. No, they were here for the long haul. Yeah. So they budgeted for success, huh? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Criti critically analyzing, uh, I believe the cross section of the subcontinent of India is not represented here. Mainly from Punjab is here. And uh, I believe the last time when some similar thing happened, Tamil Nadu, they were almost, uh, I mean, sleeping on the road and protesting. None from Tamil Nadu seem to be representing like this. You know, I mean, I, I feel that the entire subcontinent of India is not there. Majorly, Punjab is protesting. Karnataka is also over there, sir. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. I mean, the, yeah, so maybe they, they missed out one. They didn't communicate as well with them. If you take this in... Uh, in contrast to what the what the government did, how the government set out the laws, right? It's a in in a, in terms of purely communication. I'm not talking about the politics of it or anything. They did the complete opposite. 
they just set out these laws and they said they didn't engage, they didn't uh, communicate properly. After that, they were backpedaling and saying, no, 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 we've got uh, market uh, prices for you. Of course, it's there. In the initial stages, their communication was poor. We won't get into the right or wrong of either, but uh, I'm just talking about it from a point of uh, using communication for advocacy. Yeah? And, and finally, as we said, be brave. I, I, I think they've among um, in, a, in an environment, in a political environment where it does take bravery to advocate a cause. I think um, uh, finally government has met its match uh, in, in a sense because they've uh, just announced that they're going to put it on hold, you know, the oh, 18 months hold. So I, uh, for my vote, I think they've really understood the eight must do's of communicating and they've done a good job. So I just wanted to use this example to show what we mean by these things, yeah? It's rather than just be uh, words on a page. So do consider it in that way. Okay, let's now look at who we're talking to, yeah? Um, you know, when you're, uh, most of us in this group, we're, we're likely to be talking uh, talking to, who are we likely to be talking to? Who, who, which groups are we planning to um, communicate with or uh, drive home our message with? I think uh, it will be uh, mainly the caregivers uh, because they're the ones who are uh, facing all the uh, challenging situations. So they would be the ones who would need uh, to know about palliative care and about what it can do to help them. Uh, and maybe a mix of some patients who are actually going through it. That's great. And you've got a, you've got a, um, a, a group that you have identified. Now, if you start, when you're starting to communicate with them, it would be really good to start imagining them as individuals break the group of carers down to individuals because in the end, what you want to do is you want to have a chat with them, right? Your communication has to be, you're going to have a conversation with them. If, if you imagine them as individuals, it will really help you to build on how you want to speak to them. You know, we, I, I, as I say, I think last time in, uh, in our last session, uh, Smriti had a swear jar for uh, jargon uh, if we still had that jar here today, I'd like to put down the word civil society into that into that jargon jar because we often talk about civil society, but who it who is it? It might be your building group, it might be your WhatsApp group, it might be when you start breaking down. Okay, it's my it's my WhatsApp group. Okay, then I can start imagining them as individuals. I know who who's part of that group. And um, I know some things about them, or maybe I don't know some things about them. I have to find out. So this is why it's really important to understand who you're talking to. And um, it will help you find relevance to uh, how you're gonna communicate with them. So if we just look at um, finding relevance, um, you know, it's not, it, it's, it's not easy to do but it's very important to do. Uh, in, in communication and my background um, is in marketing, you know, we always used to say, put yourself in the customer's shoes. Um, if you're going to, don't tell them what you want to tell them, tell them what they want to hear. So if you're going to tell them what they want to hear, then um, it, it really becomes uh, important for you to uh, understand what matters to them. Uh, I was just thinking that perhaps we could take the uh, example of, um, I, I think in the course of these discussions, I've heard someone say, um, you know, if, if I could, if at the end of this course or during this course, if we could, if I could make a difference to one person in terms of palliative care, that would make, that would be good. So I was just wondering, like, if, Say we took a building group, okay? Many, many of us may be living in apartments. If you took a building group and you had to take this message out to them, you were 
you were going to have to talk to them about palliative care. What do you think might be a place to start? We're saying we should understand who they are and what, in, what, and what matters to them, right? Typically, what is going on in a building group? They want to know whether they're going to get, if the water, water is going to be disrupted, are the fees too high? You know, they, they, that's where their minds are at, right? How are you going to break through that? Um, sometimes in building groups, there is a, a lot of like-minded people come together, Sylvia, if I may. Mm -hmm. And um, I think if uh, we could share our own experiences on those groups and, you know, maybe in a, not the entire group, but start by a few people and uh, talk about our experience and how we went through it and how we did not have something like Palium India at that time. And... Um, as uh, as they say that it, you know every at some point in your life you are going to either be a caregiver or, or you are going to be needing care and this kind of care which is i think people are very aware now about the lack of um uh, you know uh, the lack of understanding the larger picture of palliative care and um, uh, uh, so if we could get through a bit maybe starting with sharing and your own experience. So personal stories. Personal yeah. stories, yeah. that's right. Wonderful. We've actually seen, and I think uh, Anthara will be talking about later, how we've seen that when you bring personal stories into communication, it just changes the game. People relate to that so much more. They can identify with it. So yeah, you're absolutely spot on. Thank you. Anybody else wants to... add a thought or another group. A thought that I had was, um, you know, and, and I'm giving this example to explain what I mean by understand what mass matters to them. Because I, I was thinking if I had to take a message to the a building group right now, maybe one of the things I would think about is, look, everybody's been locked down for a while, or if not locked down in a socially restricted kind of environment where connections with people have been limited. Um, sometimes uh, people in, in, in have been, you know, in, are in such circumstances that they haven't even been able to go out and um, get medicines for themselves or buy their groceries because they're afraid or um, a very isolating time for a lot of people. I'm, I might have taken the opportunity then to set the context for pallium, pall palliative care in its broader context to say, you know, this is today we can offer pall palliative care to your next door neighbor who's isolated. You don't have to be dying to take to to receive palliative care. Palliative care is beyond is 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 for people is is not just for people who are at the end of their life. Palliative care has a role to play in making, in comforting and uh, making people, giving people holistic care um, at, at any stage in their life and reach out today to someone who might be isolated and in need of help. Might be a way that I would think about um, taking a message if I was forced to. So because I've taken, I'm thinking about what they're thinking, they think, and therefore taking one example there. Just, just an example. I think all the three points that you have mentioned about understanding what matters to them, understand who or what influences them and empathy and respect. I think most of us on this group, if I'm not mistaken, are people who have gone through all these three aspects. So it will be probably easier for us to do it, um, to reach out to people who may be in a similar situation. It might be easier, especially if it's a building group or something, they know that we've gone through something like that. So the conversation starters will be easier. Uh, and uh, yeah, we can, uh, you know, uh, get through to them more uh, uh, easily if we uh, can do that. Yeah, lovely. So I think that whole empathy, having respect for the person that you're going to be communicating with, these are all important points. Uh, so I think this group gets, you get the point, you know, this is how we find relevance and try to get the message across. Make it personal, make it relevant, yeah? 
So, when we say what exactly is the message that we're going to get across, and how do we how do we how do we draft that in a sense? So, uh, once again, you know, we're going to do this in all. Uh, six steps to do that, eight steps to do this, so that it's actually usable for people from here on, yeah? The first thing in getting the message right is to really talk about what is the problem that must be addressed. You know, people are not, don't have access to, to palliative care at a time when they need it, perhaps that's the problem. What is the solution that you propose and how will it impact this problem? So the um, the problem that must be addressed is the fact that uh, they don't even know where to start most of the time. And the solution is that uh, the knowledge that we have gained in this training program uh, is something that we can share with them to help them find the solution. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and it, it will vary with, I mean, problems are going to vary and solutions are going to vary. But if we start with the fact that, you know, we have identified what the problem is, in some cases, people don't know, there's a lack of awareness. The solution is that I have information to impart and uh, then give it with an evidence supporting way, okay? Um, and evidence could be in the way of facts and figures, it could be in the way of resources, it could be, but tell them, uh, tell them the story, but also give them the the, 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 the evidence to say that this this is what what there is. And like I think um, Zahir, you said, using examples of success stories, personal stories, they will all become really important in getting your message right. Uh, may I say something, uh, please, Sylvia? Please. Uh, I think that now that we, uh, at least in my case, that now that I've come into your platform, I myself am getting more interested and uh, trying to gain more knowledge about where these kind of services are available. Who are the doctors that may be dealing with palliative care maybe in my area or if I have, or if even if somebody like in our neighborhood group reaches out and maybe we can help them by finding the right people whom they can approach rather than getting into this rigmarole of going round and round when they're already so stressed. Maybe if they would trust us, we could take that part over from them. That's a really interesting point, building trust in, in any two-way or uh, communication. Um, you, you've got to wait till you're asked in, in a way, right? right. So it, it, it'll take, it may take time. It may take that you have to just offer things for them for a while before, uh, before it becomes something they take up. So trust is something built over time of consistently communicating with actionable um, inputs or empathetic inputs or, uh, you know, something that, they, that they'll find useful. Yes, thank that's, you. That's that whole thing about motivating, right? I mean, you're, you're literally putting the, um, showing the way forward. So, if, you know, that's how you actually get them to uh, motivate them that there's hope, that their change is within reach, that something could, that, um, that something could come out of this. That's right. Yeah. And that means explaining to them what are the benefits that they would have. Uh, I love this thing uh, and I try to always use that when we're planning communication. Why should they care about what you're saying? Uh, just, if, it's about putting yourself in their shoes. Think about why should they care? And then you will find yourself being able to present your story in a more empathetic manner which has heart and head connected. It's really important to have the both. Yeah, speak to their heart and head. And then you will get them because you, in the end, you can you can feed them all the practical information but until you motivate them emotionally, it's, uh, that, that's going to be the binding strong story. The so, other thing, Sylvia, is how, like once you put it out to them, sometimes they may take a while to process it to whether they want to go with it or not. So like how much of uh, tech, I mean, with your experience, what would you say would be the time we give them before we send out a little gentle reminder or a prompt, or do you just say it once or twice and then leave it to them? 
I think you have to probably gauge that a little bit with the response. If you're going to, if you're going to get very limited, you, you may need to wait till they're ready. Right. Uh, you, you might give it a couple of tries and then you may need to get it into, but I mean, that's probably uh, more a question that in a, in a future session, we'll get Smriti to answer for us. But in terms of getting the community from, from a psychologist point of view, or if there's anyone on this group, they might want to answer that. Yeah, can I actually uh, give you my input here? I, I think that, uh, so what we are talking about right now is just about the message and like what, what we are going to say and not exactly how we're going to say it. And how we're going to say it is something we're going to come to shortly. But uh, it depends when you are speaking to someone, for example, if you're uh, you asked just now, you know, should you send them a gentle reminder or you keep this thing? So if you're talking to someone one-on-one, -on -one, there's a very different kind of communication as opposed to if you're putting a post out on social media. Right. So if I'm putting four posts a week on social media, it's fine. Nobody's going to take it personally that this person is, you know, saying the same thing again and again. But if you're talking to someone one-on-one, -on -one, you have to be a little more sensitive to, you know, how much of their personal space you're encroaching, what is the call to action? What are you reminding them about exactly? Are you just reminding them to read something? Are you reminding them to get up to become a part of your cause? So I think that goes a bit into the execution part of where exactly your message is going out. And right now, what we're talking about is more, how do you build your core message? Thank you. Thanks, Ansarab. Should we do a little exercise now? I hope everyone's got paper and pen. We're going to ask you, you've all probably heard about elevator pitches, right? It's how do you tell, tell your story very succinctly. Uh, I've, I've made it really difficult by saying 25 words or less. So in 25 year, words or less, how would you tell, how, how would you explain why you're on this course. Yeah. And some clues in the visual here. Mention your goals. Keep it brief. Introduce yourself. Share why you are well prepared to be or what are your skills, skills that make, you know, that, that might be uh, things that you want to think about. So we'll just take three minutes. There's no right or wrong answer, by the way. Sylvia, can, do they also need to, uh, can they also type out their responses in the chat? Go ahead, go ahead. Come on, the freezer, oh. the the freezer. We've already getting some in excellence. Thank you, Dr. Remy. That sounds wonderful.
okay we've got a few the purpose of this is just to use a few to as examples to see whether we are following some of the rules of communication that we just talked to so let's just see let's take one everyone can I'll, i'm going to uh, i'm going to pick uh, on one uh, avtar singh ji ma uh, just don't you know we said we talked about having a goal and a reason for doing it what you're doing why you're doing it and the need for action etc right so i'm reading this one now i am avtar singh social worker i had suffered ptsd following death of my loved one and as she had no access to appropriate care at deathbed and this prompted me to find a way for others not to let them die in suffering pardon me we're going to use it as a it's a very touching story but we're just going to use it to say whether the rules of communication have been um met there and i have to say they've been met very well you've got a goal you don't you want to find ways for others not to die in suffering um you've given reasons you've put in a personal story so i'm 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 suggesting that that is a very great way of telling your um making your pitch also the language is very simple uh, which is a big plus i feel you know when whenever there's a lot of jargon or uh, you know something that's difficult to understand feel it doesn't always resonate uh, i i think in this it's really um you don't really it's very straightforward thank you ma'am Anthra you want to comment on any one in one second I think they're mostly quite good I um I think uh, Harpreet Nair's is also uh, very similar to Aftar's in the sense of it's got that personal experience and how what you are going to do and what your goal from this is. Um, I I liked um, Purnima and Colonel Banjis as well. Uh, I think. uh you I, i think it's nice when you introduce yourself in some small way like this because it um like we discussed just before this you know that adding that human touch makes it a lot more uh, real and a lot more relatable it doesn't just feel like a an abstract concept anymore so yeah i, I think um most of them i'm are. really um pleased to see everyone's got a goal yeah yeah that's come through very well um some may need to fix the uh action things now what do you want if you're telling these people what what how, you know sometimes just think about how you want them to react yeah join me or i'm going to change this or today is the best time just just think about those things as well okay so you get the picture anyway we've got one thing clear we know how to do a good set goals and uh, also the other thing is how wonderfully emotive the language is here you use simple words and you're telling lovely stories you're using personal stories so um i think antara we can pack up and go everyone knows what to do from now on but <laughs> it looks like you're all good communicators here cancelled <laughs> okay so we talked about a planned approach this is just to give you a a um a, a in a snapshot how would we how would we do this right um when we uh, in 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 the work of communication start we always review past communication okay in this instance um a good way for you to before you define your goal or whatever it is because if you want to make a diff, if you want to position your communication amongst that whole sea of communication that is out there and the things it's good to know what has been said before so we review past communications um first when you do a planned approach then you define your objective which we just talked about we have identify our audiences we've talked about designing messages we've just done a quick example of that um we must 
have a planned approach means you must set budgets and understand the resources. As I said, budget doesn't necessarily have to be mon monetary. What are you going to budget in terms of your time or resources that in order to see this through, yeah? Um, the next thing about planning for communications, deciding on a timeline and, and a phasing, implementing a communication plan and measuring our, what we're going to talk about in the next bit, yeah? Shall I take over? Sure. Okay. So um, I think so far what we've been speaking about has been largely uh, what we are going to say, uh, how to kind of craft that message. And now we're kind of going to go into where are we going to put that those messages out and um, how can we do it most effectively basis what platforms we choose. So before we go into the specifics of, you know, social media platforms or whatever, uh, we just wanted to talk about the four types of uh, uh, channels of influence, as we call them, that, that are out there. Uh, so that there's paid media, owned media, shared media, and earned media. Uh, and they, these are all very different from each other because what you can do with each of these differs quite broadly. So I'll start with shared media because that is something that I think a, a lot of us uh, would have access to and be a part of already, which includes social media. Uh, if you are on Facebook, Instagram, if you have a page for your uh, cause or for your uh, company, that is your shared, uh, you're sharing your message with uh, multiple other people. Other people have the right to comment on your work. They can they can retweet it. They can you know engage with it in a certain way. They can disagree with you also. So it's a shared platform where you are putting out your own thing, but you're also soliciting engagement from other people. There's also influencer engagement, which actually comes in in paid and in shared. But in sh uh, shared influencer engagement, an example would be. If you um, have a celebrity who has, uh, you know, uh, maybe had a family member who has passed away of cancer and the celebrity wants to talk about palliative care and they are not charging you or anything like that. They have their own huge platform that they can reach out to, but they also have their own voice. So you want the celebrity to say something about palliative care, but the celebrity also might want to say their own particular thing. So again, it's a kind of shared um, channel of influence there. Then there's earned media, which is basically, uh, you go to another platform, which could be a newspaper, uh, a print publication, a website, another uh, you know, a news website or something like that. You write to them and you tell them, hey, you know, this is what I'm doing. Uh, would you want to write about me in some way? And they might say, hey, you know, we, we think what you're doing is cool. Yes, we will write a story about you. So you're not paying them, but you are kind of getting in touch with them and using their platform to amplify your message. Then I'll go to paid. So if you put an advertisement in the newspaper, or if you pay a celebrity to put out an Instagram post about you know, why palliative care is so important, uh, if you get an endorsement or a brand ambassador, or sometimes you might even pay a newspaper to have an article about you or to feature you in a larger article. So that comes as paid media, that all of that counts as paid media. And then there's owned media, which is only yours and nobody else can really touch it or do much with it. So your own website, if you can publish your own magazine, if you have a blog or any other collateral that you want to publish on your own and say distribute, it could be like a brochure or anything like that, uh, a flyer, all of that counts as your own media. So before we go into how we can execute on different platforms, it's important to understand what these four different channels of influence are and figuring out which works best for for you, given your cause, given your budget, given your objective, your ask, all the things that we kind of discussed earlier in the message um, while, while you were crafting your message. Um, yeah, I'll hand back over to Sylvia here. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because, uh, I mean, it's a very basic chart, but it's a good chart to, to understand what are the differences between some of the platforms that uh, 
come come here so for instance uh, tv radio print and online tv obviously combines visuals and sounds it has an extensive reach that is that is the value of um, uh, tv but by the uh, its greatest strength of extensive reach also means it's it you're potentially talking to a whole lot of people who would not really be interested it's poor it's it, it, you can target poorly by doing that you're just going out sending out a message and it might be following falling on deaf ears because they're just not people who would be interested and of course it's very expensive yeah um uh, radio on the other hand is widely accessible very affordable uh if you were going to pay to do this but alternatively you can also each of these mediums could fall under the paid because you could pay to get onto them or it could be earned yeah you could go to the uh, radio and say um a, a radio often radio have radios have segments on health or on well-being so you could you could be going to someone like them and, and talking to them about the fact that um i've got the story to tell i want to uh, can can i uh, would you be interested to uh discuss that have a uh, q and a a question and answer session or something similar to that so radio is as i said widely accessible and affordable the great thing about radio is you can also do it in um, uh, vernacular local, local languages can be used that can be quite effective um and you can have this message repeated uh you know it, because it's 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 not that expensive to get into it uh but you're missing out on that visual side of it it's sound but i mean personally i think sound can be used very effectively so it's not a it's not that of a dis disadvantage but you are only dealing with sound um by by its essence it it the it's the your story should be short and um sometimes fm stations they cover only small parts of small small areas and so uh you know it can be high if you want to again these examples are given to you more from the point of view if you were planning a big campaign not for uh, a small sense of communicate a small program so if you were looking to get to run a whole uh, advocacy campaign and planning to use either tv radio print or online these these plat these uh pointers are uh, helpful in that in instance print reaches a very broad audience accessible affordable you get really good in depth coverage uh, opportunity to go into a lot of detail um and um very often you know you can you can dedicate more time to a story um but as it says it's not immediate you know the the responses that you get uh, people have to read it people don't necessarily read it immediately so it's not as immediate and it, sometimes it if you if if your message requires to use vision and sound then you you're obviously missing out on that and of course people can choose what they read or not because it's it's not something that they're it's being broadcast out to them uh very similar for online because you're seeing more and more even print going on to online uh large reach we're seeing more and more people actually even consume their most of their news online these days it's a cost effective way it's uh, and th there is that immediacy that, that people talk about digital first you know you you having a story online you're very often they're seeking comments so you can have an instant reaction to it which is which is great um have uh, and and you're you're able to display your information in in various forms including you can have uh, sound as well as vision on uh, an online platform for this but if as any of you will know if you as you navigate things online there is so much of information there so getting to your right audience uh, can be can require for you to be very targeted about where you select to go and how you use that yeah very broadly speaking um this our session today is actually about using media uh, uh channels effectively but um we here's just a cheat sheet that you can use for yourselves i'm not going to go into it in details but it lists some of the things that you should think about in terms of uh using communication tools that you should think about having ready if you were going for instance to meet policy makers you know you want to have your fact sheets ready you want to have a good presentation ready 
letters, um, petition letters, etc. Yeah, your uh, briefs that summarize the data. So this is a really handy list to have. Similarly, if you're going to media, you have to have your pitch ready, you have to have press releases ready, you've got a letter to editor. These are a, a nice handy list of uh, tools to use when you're uh, approaching external uh, communications. So um, many of us might be faced in, in our campaign planning in trying to get into a new, your local newspaper or, uh, or your, I mean, it might be an online version or your local radio station. How do you make news? How do you make news for your initiatives? Um, obviously, Greta Thunberg has managed very well. She, um, she, she makes global news having started from one the story goes sitting outside the parliament house with her board, right? She, so she figured out how to make news. Um, I, I wanted to, I, I, there's a little image there which says the Indian Stammering Association self-help group build community support. I just happened to look at the paper today. I thought I should use an example We'll just go back to that, Antara. Um, I just had a, I wanted, to, I, I thought, okay, what's making news today? And I came across this under the well-being section in the Hindu, I think it was. It was a story about the Indian Stammering Association, self-help group builds community support. And um, why do you think it got in there? I, I think this is so clever. This group of people, they realized that Biden, um, the newly nominated president uh, they has, has a stam had a stammer, had a speech impediment before that. And it was talked about during the inauguration, etc. And they've used that um, circumstance to go to the media and frame a story. The story goes on to say how Biden has it and so you can overcome it and all of that. So they cleverly used the environment and an, and, an initial, and an occasion to get their story in. So that, I mean, I, I, that's the kind of thinking that you have to have. You have to have context. Um, you have to know whether the media will be interested to write it. Uh, and in order to get in there. But when you don't have an instance like that, you go about it. You try and get a local or a national celebrity. Celebrities, unfortunately or unfortunately, are, are, are always a draw card. It's good for the media because when there is a, a celebrity involved in it, people read it. So it's good for them and therefore they take up, uh, they're interested when you have something like that. They're also interested in local initiatives and events. So especially if it's a local paper, uh, so organizing a, 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 a drawing competition, Pallium did one really very effectively not that long ago where they had a, a art competition and sale, online sale and things, and they got featured in the, in the papers. Pallium does it very well, actually. So taking some clues from that, just organizing local events. Um, one of the tips is, especially since we're dealing with um, online uh, new uh, online platforms these days video works if you can provide video with it not always possible but if you can uh, if you can provide video with engaging content that also helps to make news um, keeping your social media active so post it and Antara will talk in detail about this but uh, not only posting it but tagging it to make sure that you're going to get your message uh, amplified and very importantly, making sure that you, you're partnering with the right people in this. So while you may, you may um, because you want them all to share it and you want them all to engage with it in a way. So make sure that you're partnering with them. You're letting them know in advance what you're doing. You're using their resources as well. I think Ansara mentioned, right? If you, if you use someone who's well known, make sure that um, not as a celebrity, but as, as someone who's got influential clout, 
partner with them in order to drive, make, make sure that your news becomes more news, um, are some of the uh, tips and tricks that you can use to make news for your initiatives. Can I add uh, something? So as you mentioned about this, uh, the Indian please, stammering. Please, Shriya. Yeah. As you mentioned about like uh, the Indian Stammering Association, even uh, Joe Biden has a rescue dog. So all animal welfare organizations across the world are uh, posting about it. You know, yeah. the president of a, a rescue dog at the White House. The first rescue dog of the White House. Yeah, yeah. the first rescue dog. And, it's supposedly, I, I'm not sure, but people are saying adoptions are increasing for rescue dogs. So it's, it's. I think it's some ways, yes, it does help a cause and uh, we've got to make good use of it at that point. Thank you. Just want to share that. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, someone just left a message. Objective is to catch the eye of the audience. That's that's it. They, they found a tool. Yeah. So you can see how... Um, uh, you know, there there are ways and means to make sure that you get in the news. What do we have next, Antara? Yeah. So I'm just going to talk a little bit um, about what social media platforms are out there and how you can kind of um, be successful on social media or do your best to be successful on social media. Um, so I think uh, a lot of times especially nowadays if you started a company or if you have a particular cause people are like oh like what's your twitter handle or are you on facebook do you have a facebook page and there is this almost um, it's almost impossible to exist as a brand and not have a presence on social media nowadays uh, that being said every social media platform is not for every single brand there are some brands which do better on certain social media platforms. And it's really important for us, uh, all of us in this group, to uh, figure out what platform works for us and uh, start with that and maybe then build from there rather than trying to do everything and be everywhere at once because that can be a little overwhelming and frankly, it is exhausting. So you want to go with a slightly more structured approach. So before I go into like the details of how to manage a social media account, I just wanted to talk about the four major social media platforms out there, which are Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. So each of these four have their own strengths and their own drawbacks. Um, so Twitter is a very fast moving platform. If I tweet today, um, you may follow me, but if you have not opened Twitter today, if you open open Twitter after two days, you're not going to see my tweet. Sometimes if you open it after two hours also, you may not see my tweet. It's a very, very fast moving and current kind of platform. The posts are very short. So you have only 280 characters, uh, which includes your, links, your tags. Includes your links, your tags, your uh, for, uh, whatever you want to say has to fit into those 280 characters, which can sometimes be a bit of a challenge. But in a way, it's also positive because it means that people read your whole post. Very rarely do they have the time to get bored before they reach the end of your sentence. Um, you can also put up pictures along with a tweet. And for the best performance, you should put it up in a rectangle, which is double the length as it is the height. Uh, that way it will not get cropped when somebody is scrolling through their feed. Then we have Facebook, which is the most popular platform in terms of pretty much everybody has a Facebook account. Uh, so you can reach out to a lot of people that way. Your posts can be pretty much as long as you want. The character limit is 63,000, which I think nobody is ever going to reach. Um, you can also have any shape or, I mean, shape, being within square to rectangle, you can have any uh, aspect ratio and Facebook will not really crop it. Uh, so it's in that sense, Facebook is a good place to be, but the Facebook algorithm is one of the worst out of all the social media platforms, which means basically that even if I follow a page, I may not see any updates from that page. Uh, even if you have posted an update, even if I come online, even if I'm scrolling through my feed, I may not see it. And that's because Facebook's algorithm is very, very um, 
uh, it is not supportive of pages at all. It is supportive of your friends. Uh, and with pages, they are encouraging you to boost your posts or to advertise in some way, to put in some money into it, to make your even your own followers see all your posts. The way to work around this on Facebook is to kind of build an audience that is constantly engaging. So, for example, if I follow Pallium's page, if I like a post from Pallium today, I'm very likely to see another post from Pallium tomorrow. But if I see a post from Pallium on my feed today and then I scroll past it without doing anything, then I may not see the post from Pallium tomorrow. So you have to kind of build your audience and you have to really invest some time and energy in getting your audience to interact with your content on Facebook because otherwise it will just become like you're putting out posts and you're not going to be seeing any engagement. Okay. Then uh, there's LinkedIn. Uh, so LinkedIn is great for um, anything to do with uh, anything to do with business. If you're looking for donors, if you're looking to hire, if you're looking to um, sort of tell those kind of stories in that space of how you built the organization or why you built the organization or who, what kind of people you are looking for, LinkedIn is your place to be. Uh, so if in your messaging, you know, if that is one of your core things, then then this is a good platform for you. Uh, it's also pretty archival. Uh, so when we when I say a, a, a platform is archival, I mean, Twitter is not a very archival platform because like I said, it's so fast moving and people retweet and tweet so often that if I post a tweet today, it's very likely going to get buried uh, after five days, it'll be very difficult for somebody to find a five day old tweet of mine. But in LinkedIn and Facebook, that post kind of will remain on your profile and you can kind of uh, see it again very easily. Um, so that that is LinkedIn. And then we have Instagram, which um, which is a very, very popular platform nowadays. Uh, I think it has overtaken Facebook in terms of how many people are um, active on it. Um, so even if a person has a Facebook and an Instagram account, they're a little more likely to be active on Instagram nowadays. Um, it's also a very visual platform, which is why it works very well from the from the perspective of uh, you know behavior. You're just scrolling past a lot of pictures. So you can have a longer caption on Instagram, but frankly, there's no guarantee that anybody is reading your caption. So your, uh, your picture has to be compelling enough that people want to look at the caption and they want to read what you have there. If there is, for example, if you're talking about an event that's upcoming or something like that, make sure the details are there in your picture so that um, you know people definitely see it and don't miss out on that. Uh, Instagram is also out of the four, the best platform to advertise on because it is the cheapest uh, in terms of your, um, the return on your investment. Uh, Twitter is the most expensive uh, for every, uh, say every new view that you get, you're paying a lot more on Twitter than you are on Instagram. On Instagram, it can cost as little as 50 paise for one uh, engagement on your post. On Twitter, it's about five to 10 rupees. So there's a huge difference there. I hope this was not too technical. I just thought it was important to set the context of what our platforms, what we're working with so that you can choose your platform wisely. Um, and now I'll just go into how to use those platforms. How do you manage a social media page? I think, uh, like I said earlier, there is this tendency uh, or, or this expectation when you have a brand that you have to be on social media, but managing a page is a full-time job. You have to really be very conscious about what you're putting out there, doing it at a certain frequency, making sure that it's successful, um, learning from your past mistakes, constantly customizing your content, etc. So how can you do this without really sapping yourself of, you know, all your energy? There are a few um, things that we've learned with time. So the first thing is uh, making content buckets. So I would recommend that for any uh, page uh, that you want to run, have four to six, at least four to six or seven content buckets. A uh, content bucket is basically... Uh, different kind of communication or a different thing that you're talking about. So I'll give you an example. 
uh, say, if again, taking the example of Pallium itself, uh, one content bucket could be educative content, where you're just explaining what does palliative care mean? What is a caregiver? What are caregiver rights? Uh, what is grief? How do you deal with grief? These are all uh, educative pieces. Then you can have human interest stories, which is also something that we've discussed earlier, like sharing a personal experience of somebody who has had a brush with palliative care. And maybe you make that into a weekly uh, recurring uh, property where once a week you feature a story. Another content bucket could be events. So we can talk about an upcoming event. We can talk about a past event. We can link people to our events. We can whatever, we can talk about events. Fourth bucket could be a blog, et cetera. So you can have certain content buckets. This will make sure that A, you're not talking too much about only one kind of thing. Your content won't become too repetitive. And at the same time, it will also help you come up with fresh content without feeling like, oh my God, like I have no new ideas at all. If you have that content bucket, it will kind of channel your thinking in a more systematic way. Um, the second thing is um, campaigns. So campaigns are a whole other topic, which maybe we could spend a, an entire two hours on, but just to keep, keep it quick, a campaign is something that lasts for a moderately short period of time, maybe a month or maybe a few weeks. Uh, and your campaign is a message within your message. So if you have your larger message about palliative care, et cetera, et cetera, you might want to have a campaign which is only about one aspect of palliative care, which may be say caregiver rights. Uh, if I want to make a campaign about caregiver rights, which I'm running in the month of February, 2020, uh, what is the name of my campaign? Maybe caregivers matter. I'm just making this up off the top of my head. So this is not creative at all, but come up with a creative name, have that name repeated in all the uh, campaign material that you're putting out. Uh, make sure that you're kind of linking back. So bring your content buckets to your campaign. If you're doing a human interest story, do human interest stories on caregivers. If you're doing an educative post, do your educative posts on caregiver rights, etc. So you can still have your content buckets. And then for the one month of February, you can just focus it down into this specific campaign, which can this. So the, the reason we do campaigns is that it spikes engagement. Suddenly you're only talking about caregivers. So there will be interest from the caregiver group specifically on this. You, you're going to see more traction with people who have been in a situation where they are caregivers. They might tag other people who they know who are caregivers and then you will see a certain spike in your content. So you don't need to have a campaign every month or every week, but it's good to have at least three to four campaigns a year that will help kind of pull in new audiences. Um, the third is platform specific content. So just before this, I explained what all the four platforms were and what their benefits and uh, drawbacks are. Keeping all of that in mind, don't put the exact same post on all four platforms. Even if you just modify it slightly, make sure you do that so that it, it's sort of you're priming it for success in some way. Um, the fourth thing is interacting with social media profiles which are relevant to you. Um, for example, uh, if, if you're doing an event again on caregiver rights, um, are there other caregiver organizations that you can tag in your posts? Can you, um, try to do a collaboration with another caregiver organization and get them to do something with you? Uh, try to basically go outside your echo chamber at all times, uh, by, pulling in other people who would be interested in this. This doesn't mean you spam the same handles over and over again. Like if you tag Narendra Modi in every post that you do, he's not actually going to retweet something that you do. I'm sorry, but it's not going to happen. But if you are doing a caregiver campaign and then you tag say a caregiver Sathi or, a, or an organization that works in that space, they are more likely to interact with you. And so you have to be a little careful about who you are tagging, who you are interacting with. How do you make yourself seen on their platforms? Maybe you could go and comment on their posts through your page. Then that means the people who are following them are seeing your, you know, the name of your page and they may visit you. So you have to kind of be a little more like you have to be a little agile with this. Um, the fifth thing is capitalizing on trends, which basically means that 
uh, exactly what we just discussed about, say, the Joe Biden thing, right? Uh, see what's going on in the environment around you and see if you're able to make a connect to your cause and put it out there on the same day. Don't think about it for two weeks and then, you know, try to make a very careful plan and execute it and all of that because in two weeks that news is going to be stale. So trends are something that it, a trend can sometimes be predicted. For example, I can guarantee that on Tuesday, hashtag Republic Day is going to be trending on Twitter because it is Republic Day and I know it's going to happen. So some trends I can see beforehand and I can prepare accordingly. Some trends you don't know that they're going to come. Suddenly India wins a cricket match. Can you link a cricket match to palliative care somehow? Try and, and you know, do it. And then you're very likely through your hashtags that uh, to, to be discovered by an account that wouldn't be following you normally. And the last thing is, of course, this is very vague, but be engaging. Um, this basically means that when you're writing a post, don't just write a sentence, uh, have a call to action, uh, which could be, for example, visiting a link, visiting a website, signing up for an event, or it could even be asking a question like, have you ever noticed something like this? Have you ever experienced something like this? Retweet if you relate to this. So just having these little tweaks in the way of writing your content can inspire somebody to comment on what you're doing. Otherwise, somebody may see your post and say, hey, this post is great, but they may scroll past without writing anything back. But if you write a, if you ask a question and you say, you know, respond in the comments below, you're nudging that person to, to interact with you. And that builds your post on against these algorithms that we're fighting. It, it makes it more visible to other people. Again, I hope that was not too much. Um, I'll quickly now talk about the about measurement and and um, how we can use measurement to our advantage. Yeah, so measurement can be done on any of the platforms that we've mentioned, uh, not just on social media, but even with your traditional media, with your shared owned and all of those media platforms. You can measure, but the easiest. We, the easiest platforms to measure are your social media because they have an inbuilt analytics uh, sort of there. Um, but why is measurement really important? Are we just doing it to say that, hey, we got a thousand people to look at our page in, in January? No, measurement is actually really important because it helps you understand where you went right and where you went wrong. If in the month of January, I reached out to a thousand people and in the month of February, I reached out to 200 people. That means I did something wrong in February. And what did I do in Jan that I didn't do in Feb that I can implement as feedback for March? Uh, that is something that, that is where measurement becomes really important. Um, and it can inform, do you need to change your message? Do you need to change your execution plan? Do you need to change your budgets? Do you need to change any of the questions that we asked you know, at the beginning when we were crafting the message? Um, so yeah, that's, that's sort of what the importance of measurement is. Uh, each social media platform has inbuilt analytics where you can see uh, you can probably even divide it by like last seven days, last 28 days, last six months and last one year. And it's good to take stock at any given point of time. Uh, like I mentioned, like what your previous period was compared to your current period and keep using that to inform your strategy. Uh, you can also uh, measure success. Uh, and, I, and I don't mean success just as reach, but you can also see if another page, for example, is also on palliative care and you are starting a page on palliative care and you're seeing that page is doing, you know, is getting 50, 60 likes per post, but your, your posts are getting two, three likes a post. What is that page doing that you're, you're not doing? So measurement doesn't even always have to be internal. You can also look at what other people are doing, see where they are see if you can be inspired by them in some way, which obviously does not mean ripping off content, but um, seeing how they are resonating with another, uh, like we spoke about the farm bills earlier in the session, you know, can we take inspiration from the farm bills in some way we're talking about palliative, palliative care. Um, 
so that these are like some ways in which measurement is important i won't get into the technical aspect of how to do measurement but i'm happy to answer any questions that people uh, that any of you might have about it and now we will just come back to this slide which we discussed a few slides ago um and we can just kind of maybe rest here for a bit and if anybody has any questions silvia is there anything else you want to add before that no I, th I think the reason why we put this back again is to say there is a process and if you follow a process you will have success um but it's not easy to follow a process all the time but we should try as often as we can um and and uh, if you can take away three things from today and do them consistently uh, hopefully you'll be better off than you were without so um with that i think if we've got a few minutes and we thought we'd leave that for you to ask us any questions no difficult questions please and also like silvia said we will be doing a, like more exercises and we have more time for questions on next saturday session so if these if today's questions could just be about the the content that we covered here i think that would be really great uh, we have one question in the chat box uh, Uh, what do you suggest about paid promotions? Are they beneficial to push our agenda ahead? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think uh, paid promotions definitely have their place. Uh, it's not, uh, you know, it's not a waste of money. I wouldn't say it's a waste of money, because the thing about social media, at least, if you're doing paid promotion on social media, you can reach a very, very targeted audience. I can say I want to target people in Trivandrum between the ages of eighteen and twenty-five. who are interested in non profits in healthcare in this this and uh, you know i can i can make it that granular which you could never do with like a tv ad or something like that so because you are being that granular then even if you're putting you know 500 rupees or 1000 rupees into promoting that you know you're reaching your desired audience does it mean that your desired audience is definitely going to respond the way you want them to respond no because that is obviously also based on how you're putting a message across etc a lot of other factors but um yeah i think there's definitely merit in a mix of paid and organic um approaches for social media for sure with media i think uh, it can be a little more tricky because the amounts of money are much larger and your uh, again the measurement is sort of in your your reliant on the other party to provide Me measurement of how it, how your money was spent and how well it did or didn't do. Um, but I think even there, there is say if you were to get a brand ambassador or if you were to um, pay for an article in a in a newspaper that has a really wide reach, I would say just consider it and do it. Don't just do it because it's available as an option. Do it only when you have all your other pillars in place. Otherwise, if you're paying say 50000 rupees to get an article in a newspaper and then you've not really thought through that article well you are it's not going to be successful so that would be my two cents thank you antara the uh, avatar has just said he's actually was talking about uh, facebook I can't see the yeah. that's oh. okay so uh, I I don't know if you can answer this it's a I think it's a related question when I repost of on Facebook for example caregiving yeah. month are oh, you yeah from caregiver sathi it doesn't seem to catch many people yeah so this is what i was saying that if you're reposting from a page or if you're posting anything from a page in the first place your followers are less likely to see it on facebook because that's just how the algorithm works i would recommend that you don't repost too often because as it is a page is visibility is low and on top of that if facebook re recognizes that you're not putting out original content but you're sharing other people's content all the time they may reduce your reach uh, you know further uh, the thing is this is not really accessible to us as to why facebook you know what exactly when when does our reach become lower why does our reach become lower etc but i would say only share things that are you know pick and choose what you want to share and beyond that try to make original content that you're sharing and if you are sharing things try to share them from a personal page rather than from a from another facebook page 
this is unfortunately there is no work around to this this is a uh, this is an algorithm problem thank you any other questions we still have time how many on the group are on social using social media i just wanted we we did post about arohan on social media so i'm sure uh, a lot would be on social media i am i do it on my own website as well as on linkedin quite a bit uh linkedin is my go to uh, for most of the things since i have an e-commerce site mm. so it's a business tool so it's yeah. uh, easier for me and yes there is a lot of interest in um uh health issues especially and there are a lot of businesses which try to promote themselves on linkedin so it's a very good tool uh, is what i have found yeah and the disadvantages that antra mentioned about facebook is very true yes uh, it's not really that good i have tried the uh, paid uh, promotions yet uh, but i was just toying with the idea maybe i'll just give it a try now that i've heard about it yeah i would suggest if you're going to try it try it out with very small amounts try it out with you know 200 rupees 300 rupees uh, and uh, uh, fiddle with it a little bit see what is working for you because you can target very specifically sometimes you may not want to be very yes. specific and sometimes you might want to be very specific so you can see what works better for you yeah they keep sending out um, messages asking me to promote and the cost like you said is just a few hundred rupees so it's worth maybe taking a shot at it thank you yeah. Is there anyone who's not on social media? That would be, I think, the most relevant question to ask. Seems like it. Yeah. I'm not very familiar with how to. Uh, you, I, I mean, how I don't. I'm not on Twitter, and I'm not very familiar about re reposting on LinkedIn, etc. So I think I'm going to learn now because it seems like these are important, right? you better learn before next week session because next next week session we're going to do an online uh, campaign you, we are all together going to do a campaign okay i'll try my best <laughs> just kidding. thank you thanks for the tip <laughs> so i think uh, you know just as a an aside i think for people who are not yet on any of the social media platforms do not go as far as starting a page for your brand or your for your company or your cause i think what you can just start off with is creating a personal profile so that you can familiarize yourself with the platform a little bit and you can just see what's out there try tinkering with it try seeing you know what appeals to you what doesn't appeal to you personally and only once you feel comfortable with the platform should you start you know a page for your cause because that's that's a whole other ball game so that that would be my recommendation i think avtar has another question also he says do i need to make audience by paid promotion and then start pushing my content further so yeah uh, in on facebook uh, there are uh, ad goals uh, which basically means what do you want people to do with the ad do you want people to message you do you want them to visit your website do you want them to like your page that and that is the call to action that facebook ads ads below the ad so you can do an ad with the goal of um growing your follower base uh, that is a good idea uh, if you're a new page and you know who you want your followers to be um that being said you still have to after that be very regular with your content because it's easy to gain followers from an ad like that but it's difficult to keep them hooked because you've gotten them in so easily they will also leave just as easily uh, so it's not a foolproof thing to just buy followers or through an ad and then sort of feel like oh i've got you know 10000 followers or whatever um it it again it has to be a combination of two things thank you antra sarvya uh, we still have 4 uh, minutes left so we'll take one last question um and i think uh, maybe we should give them an assignment for the week to do what <laughs> if you can come up with a quick assignment or something they can do before the next class with you both if you can come up with something 
Sylvia, do you have something? My thing would just be getting on to social media, taking that leap of faith. Not an assignment as such, just a thing to do. Any last question for today? Maybe we can do one on any social uh, media platform like Shreya men mentioned. Uh, we can just do a post about Pallium India and the training program that we're going through just to create a buzz around uh, palliative care. Yes, that's a good idea. But, yeah. And please tag Pallium India in your posts. Of course. <laughs> so that... I seem to be the only one most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, thank you, everyone. So we yeah. so did, did you understand that um, um, a little assignment that was said to you uh, just now? Like if we could all do a post on whatever medium we're on, uh, talking about this particular co course and and tagging it further. Yeah, so after you were saying you'd like a assignment, there you go. Let's try and do that. Yeah, actually, there's a lot of enthusiasm for the assignment. I'm really loving it. So please, yes, uh, please do post. And you can put a screenshot of your post on the WhatsApp group. So we can see it as well. So that would be great. Thank you so much. And uh, we have the same class part two next week where we will be building curiosity and breaking down the apathy with Sylvia and Antara. So do keep your questions ready and be ready to use your social media platforms next week for our class. And yes, do go through other pages, uh, do your little research. Um, I, we've learned so much today, so keep going and have a lovely, lovely weekend. See you all next Saturday. And uh, we'll be sharing the feedback link as well. Uh, on the WhatsApp group and for people who've left WhatsApp, it will be mailed to you. So thank you so much and take care of yourself. See you all soon. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank Bye, you. everyone. Thank you. Um, Santini has asked to rephrase the assignment. So Shriya, if you could just send it as a message on the group, maybe if you guys have a WhatsApp group. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll do that. I'll, I'll...